Hi, everybody. Once again, um, let me apologize to you for taking so long to get these videos out. I have been studying for my AWS DevOps Pro exam, so everything kind of got pushed to the wayside. I'm still studying, but I decided to make these videos back to back. Um, I won't release them all at once, but I will at least get them all done and put out there. So we're going to go ahead and go through uh, day two of WrestleMania. No, I, don't, I know it's been a month since the WrestleMania, but I wanted to get everybody up to date on, on location and how they operate. Now, if you hear my fan in the background, I'm very sorry. I tried to turn that thing off, but it's just cranking. So hopefully it'll cut off on its own eventually. So let's get to this. Um, day two. I realized that this was the day for WrestleMania. I still had not gotten my priority pass with on location. If you saw my video one, uh, they started giving out the passes on Friday between 3 to 7, but the entire time I was at SmackDown. So I needed to get my uh, my badges so I can get on the bus to WrestleMania that day. With the package that I got, which was the hotel package, you get transportation from the hotel to the SoFi um, Stadium. So I saw that in their package, once again, they would open up at 9 a.m. I was like, okay, I know how registration works. I need to be there early in case there's a line. So I got there, I said, okay, I'll get there at 8.30. And then that way everything will be cool. And I'll, I'll stand in line, I'll grind it out, I'll be there with a bunch of other people and just make friends in line. I got there and there was no line. The staff was already there at 8.30, ready to go ahead and give you a badge. And they were super nice. And I was like, wow, y'all here 30 minutes early. Y'all already doing this. Awesome. So I got my badge, which is right here. Very cool. And of course, it's silver all around. So you know that it's the silver level badge. And see there, the priority pass on location. Right there. Very official. So, I got my badge and I decided that, hey, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Superstore because I still haven't been to the Superstore yet. Now, please understand that the Hall of Fame Smackdown and uh, Monday Night Raw was at the Crypto Arena. The Superstore was at, so I thought I had turned my notifications off. That's my dad sending me a text message. Okay, so the, the Monday Night Raw Smackdown and uh, Hall of Fame were at the uh, crypto arena. The Superstore was at the LA Convention Center. WrestleMania was at the SoFi Stadium. <laughs> I was like, wow. And then the Undertaker thing was at the Novo. Now the Novo, the LA Convention Center, and the crypto arena were in the same two blocks. So they were all walking distance from each other and they were all walking distance from a hotel. So that was not bad. I can live with that. Being that I wasn't in the area, I was a little worried. But that area of LA is so busy and there's so many people and it was pretty easy to find things, especially since there were banners everywhere with WWE superstars on it. It was pretty easy to find it. Now, I had found the LA Convention Center before, but I found it at night. And I found it when I was like lost with a whole bunch of other people trying to find it. So I was like, man, I got to find it daytime now. Y'all know that finding something in the day and night is two different things. <laughs> Luckily, there was this huge line coming out of the convention center, so it was pretty easy to figure out where it was. As soon as I saw that line, I was kind of like, uh, crap, this is long. But then I remembered that the lounge had its own access point, and because I had gotten my pass, there was access to the lounge. So I asked one of the guards there, like, hey, is this the line for the lounge? He was like, no, no, no. This is just lines of Superstore. The lounge line is over there. He said, you'll go keep walking that way. You'll see a big banner. So I walked and I see this big banner that says lounge access. And I kid you not, there were like 10 people in that line waiting to get in. That other line for the store had like 200 people in it. I was going to be out there for an hour because they were doing bag checks. And making people go through metal detectors. And of course... Any convention center has a limit on how many people can be in there. So I'm pretty sure that staff is keeping count on how many people are in here right now to walk around the shop. Now, one thing I think people don't know is that even if you aren't coming to a WWE event, 
you can still go to the superstore. It's the superstore is pretty much a mall. That's all it is. It doesn't this doesn't cost you money to go to the mall simply because they know you're gonna spend money once you're inside of it. So you so anybody can go in there. You don't need to have an access pass to go to the actual superstore itself. You don't need to be going to WrestleMania. You don't need to be going to SmackDown. You don't need to be going to Hall of Fame. You don't need to be going to um, Monday Night Raw. You don't need to be doing any of that. If there is a WWE pay-per-view event in your area with a store, with a superstore, go check it out. See what's going on. See what's happening. See what there is to buy. There were hats, uh, shy glasses with the drip. If you've seen a um, Razor Ramon, you know this drip. If you've seen a Damien Priest, they always have that same drip. Uh, I have my WrestleMania. Yeah, WrestleMania. So I I go inside through the lounge now. If this is a superstore, and you enter this way. This is the lounge, and you enter this way, and then there's a rope in between. So it was pretty much a cheat code to get to the store by going through the lounge area. Let me tell y'all, number one, the lounge is nice. Uh, because the superstore itself doesn't really have a place to sit down. It's, it's just like any other place that you go to shop. You're meant to walk around, stay on your feet, buy things, and leave. With the lounge, there were drinks, uh, places to sit, and then I realized it was a stage. At that point, my only focus was, let's go shopping. I took a video, sent it to my whole family, said, hey, if you see something you want, do a screenshot, circle it, tell me what size, I'll make sure you get it. So I made my video, and I bought a bunch of things, as y'all can see, you know, hats and stuff, swag, all that stuff. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready to sit down. Uh, at this point, I realized it was like 10 o'clock. And the buses didn't leave until uh, 12.45 to get to the SoFi Arena. I was like, I got two hours to kill. Do I want to go to my hotel? Do I want to just chill out? And I said, let me go to the lounge and just chill out. Now, as I was walking through the Superstore, I realized there was a bunch of stuff to see, but there was just so many people in the Superstore. I'm just one of the people that once I do what I came to do, I want to leave, especially if there's a, a large group of people and there's no rhyme or reason to where they are so i went to the lounge and, I, and as i'm going towards the lounge there's a whole crowd of people around it i'm thinking to myself what is going on and then i hear a voice a voice that i've recognized i'm like wait a minute i, I said is is that drew mcintyre's voice i thought well maybe they're playing like some video or something and as i'm weaving my way through the crowd trying to get to the lounge I, I hear people, oh, it's Drew McIntyre, it's Drew McIntyre. I'm like, wait a minute, what? And so I finally get to the lounge. I show them my access. I go back there, and there is Drew McIntyre doing an actual interview for a podcast right there in front of us. I was like, oh, it's Drew McIntyre. Huge dude. Very cute. Very sweet. Finally, that thing went off. So I, I go ahead and I get my soda because the drinks are free. And yes, they do have actual alcohol, but y'all know I'm not a big drinker. I'm a... I collect shot glasses, not a big drinker. Uh, and when I say not a big drinker, I may, I'll drink like my birthday and when I go one time when I go to Vegas and that's it, I'm good. So I, I sit down now, there was a stage, so a stage, and then there were four rows of seats. The first two were for elite and uh, champion level people. There's elite, champion, uh, gold, bronze, and silver. And yeah, gold, bronze, well, gold, silver, and bronze. I was fine with being two rows back because if you sit on the edge, you still get a good camera shot. And it was pretty funny. He was funny. They did the interview. And so the a girl sitting next to me was like, oh, I can't wait. Bianca Belair is next. I was like, wait a minute, what? Bianca Belair is next. And she's like, oh, you didn't go on the website? I was like, no, I didn't know there was a website. She was like, Oh, yeah, on the website for Superstore, it'll tell you who's doing interviews and who's doing photos. I was like, wait a minute, there are photos? She's like, yeah. She said, there's some people going to be doing photos. I haven't checked out who's today, but 
So I know there's a place in here where you get photos with superstores. I was like, come on. Why didn't I know this? Like, come on, Tiffany, think. Go to the website. Check things out. You know better than this. But I thought the superstore was just a superstore. I thought there was just a place to buy things. I didn't realize they were going to be doing interviews. There was a place to play uh, the WWE 2K23 video game. I was not paying attention to the website to see what else was going on. I was just happy to be there. So Bianca Belair did her interview. So sweet. She took pictures with kids. Now, mind you, it wasn't a place to take pictures with them. They kind of, they, they took pictures with kids because they're kids. But as soon as the adult was trying to come, they was like, nah, no, dude, come on, come, stop, step back. And I respect that. You know, they're, it's there to, they're there to make money. Let's be honest. Be honest. And I'm sorry, I'm realizing I have eyeliner on one eye and it kind of wore off on the other. I fell asleep in my eyeliner and I can see it now. But yeah, I, I know, I fell asleep in it. Um, I'm sorry, you guys, I just woke up and I decided that screw this, I'm not putting on any makeup. Only reason I have on makeup, well, only on my eye. But let's finish this. So Bianca Belair did her interview. She was so funny and sweet. And she saw my how her um her costume still wasn't ready yet because y'all know she makes her own gear. And so somebody's like, oh, she's like, it's not gonna be on time Saturday. She's like, a Saturday. She's like, I'm wrestling on Sunday. She's like, I need to get off the stage if I'm wrestling Saturday. Cause uh my costume is not ready yet. Um, she had finished Angelo Dawkins and she had finished Monte Fours, but she still need to do hers. And she was like, I'm going to be ready. She said, I should I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. And then um, she left. And I was like, oh, who's next? It's like, oh, Gunther. Is that so like, dude, I'm definitely staying for Gunther. Come on. Dude is huge. Love him. Great wrestler. Great technical guy. So he did his interview uh, funny. You know, some people just come off as shy. Like, they, they're happy to do what they do. But they may not be that comfortable with the interview portion of it. Just because they don't know what to expect. And I got that vibe from him. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a shy guy and I'm, I'm here and I'm doing this. But I'm not particularly comfortable with this part of my job. But very kind. Answered all the questions. Left. And at this point I realized, oh, it's actually like 11.45. Let me head back to the hotel so that I could catch uh, the bus to get there. So I get to the hotel, I drop off all the stuff I bought back in my hotel room because I had enough time because it was like a 10 minute walk between the LA Convention Center. And that's if you're not huffing it. Like if you're not power walking, it's a 10 minute walk. So I get back to my hotel, I drop all my stuff off and I bought a lot of stuff, you guys, like no joke. What you see right now is just probably a 10th of what I bought. Like one thing I bought was my Rhea Ripley pop that was signed with the WrestleMania 39. Very cute. But like I said, I bought a lot of stuff. And this was the stuff that I bought for me. I still had not gotten stuff for the family yet that I sent the messages to like, hey, let me know what you want me to buy and I'll go get it. Uh, so I called my family and let them know, hey, I'm still alive. Uh, I got... Uh, the picture of my uncle. He really got me into pro wrestling. I thought I brought it down here. Did I set my stuff on top of it? I know for a fact I brought it down here. Oh, here it is. So. Oh, picture of my uncle. He got me into pro wrestling when I was two. And I always said we would go to WrestleMania together. Unfortunately, he passed away before we had a chance to make that a reality. So I brought his picture with me so that he would be with me at WrestleMania. So that was a huge deal for me to actually bring him with me and make that sort of just a thing we could do and not be by myself. Because I know that he was definitely with me in spirit and I'm going to try not to cry. Uh, and it just made me feel better knowing that he was there the whole time. And... Of course, I had him in my stadium bag, so he he saw. <laughs> and I understand that when you go to places like this, sorry. Um, the other when you go to places like this, that um, you have to be careful for bag policies. I'm gonna get through this, you guys. Um, Y'all know I don't cut. We get we get through this straight through. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna try to make these tears go away. 
you have to be careful with bag policies. Every the crypto arena, the cell fire arena, and the convention center all had different bag policies. What you need to do is figure out the best the best bag to bring from one place to the other. For me, it was this uh, Fat Fit Fun bag because it's the size of a clutch and it's see through. So this will fit most bags. Stay in like ninety nine point nine percent of bag policies. This will fit just fine. So I went to the hotel, dropped off my all my stuff, and the bus is picking up at the hotel next door. And I went to staff and I said, hey, how do I get to this hotel? What's the quickest way? And it's like, oh, go out the back. And it's across the street. You're going to you're gonna cross a, a pay-for parking lot. And you'll see a sign there that says, uh, uh, Courtyard Marriott. And that's how you get there. So I go out the back, cross the pay-for parking lot, and there was a sign right there. And there were two buses that I saw. And I was, I just kind of walked around. I was like, hey, is this bus going to the sofa? And it was like, yeah. And it was like, oh, you have your, your creds. I showed them my, my badge, my access badge right here. And I had my WWE belt on me. And I got on the bus. And I realized that there were other people with the same color as me. And I was like, okay, good. I'm on the same bus. Uh, one person was told that they, one person was told that they, did not have access to the bus because they had just bought a uh, silver for the stadium. They didn't buy the actual group package, the travel package. Like I told you guys, there was levels for just stadium tickets. There were levels for two nights of tickets. And then there were levels for travel packages. If you got the travel package, then you got access to the bus. If you didn't get the travel package, you didn't get access to the bus. You just got special privileges once you got to the theater. I mean, once you got to the stadium, that person was unfortunately told they had to leave the bus. But then one person was told, oh, you're an elite member. You guys have your own bus. I was like, what? They get their own bus. But yeah, elite members got their own private bus. And it was a much smaller bus. Uh, I've seen those buses before. And those are like the limousine of buses. We had the really nice, it was like an upgraded Greyhound bus. Everybody's seat was comfortable. There was drink cozies every single place. Uh, but it wasn't like a bus I hadn't been on before, especially on a long trip. So it, it wasn't it wasn't a bad bus. It was a really good bus. But if you've ever been on one of those like really plush limousine type buses, that's the one the elite members got. I'm not sure if Gold got that bus too, but the elite members got that bus. And it was a much smaller bus. So it was probably about... 15 20 people on that bus uh you got on the bus it was air conditioned it was nice we were all kind of joking and laughing with each other talking about what match do you want to see who's your favorite it, it just that kind of camaraderie you get at a wwe event we get to the event and now they got us there like super on time the doors open for the event at 2 uh 245 we got there at like 145. So we just kind of stood out there for an hour. Luckily, I had my phone on me. It was fully charged. I had I always had my backup battery. Always, 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 always have your backup battery. And so I just ended up reading a book simply because I know my Kindle does not kill my battery. I, I turn off every other app on my phone and just have my book on there. And so I'm just reading my book and it's taking a while. When they when 245 hit. It was taking a really long time for the line to move. And the guy behind me was getting upset because he was a gold member. And for gold and elite, for from, from 245 to 345, there was a hospitality suite where they can get free food and drinks. And he knows that every moment that he's out here is cutting into his food and drink time. And I understand him being upset. Like, I get this. You pay for this. It's part of your package and you're not getting what you pay for. So him getting upset behind me was understandable. I'm just thinking to myself, do not let this dude freak out on the rest of us because he's upset about this. So I'm with I'm telling that person, if I see you getting upset, I'm just gonna go, damn, dude, that's real messed up. I agree with you because I don't want you to get mad at me because you're because I'm in the area. I'm just gonna agree with you for right now until you're until you're out of line. 
So the way the SoFi Arena had to set up was that there was a line for suite people, people who had a suite, a, a box seat. Then there was a line for uh, elite members. Then there was everybody else, people who had floor seats, and then another line for something else. And the one for the one I was in, the scanner broke. So they just always had a standing there. And like somebody was like, look, hey, can y'all get us on a different scanner? Like, can y'all take two lines at once on one scanner? Like, ooh, this line needs to get moving. Like, we're kind of getting annoyed out here. And this dude was getting even madder because he realizes that he's getting cut into his sweet time. He's like, hey, are they going to keep the suite open longer? Because you guys aren't letting us in. Which, honest, that, which, yes. That should have happened. If you realize that no one's being let in, the suite should be opened up a little bit longer for those people. You know, if you if the door's open 15 minutes late, that suite should be opened up 15 more minutes. That's how I feel. Uh, so they finally decided to let us go through the box seat, box seat line because there was no one going through that line. You have to realize that those two lines for elite members and uh, box seat had no one in it. The line for everybody else was so long. And then finally decided, hey, you guys can just go through here. Now, I did feel bad for people who did have boxies who finally came. And that line for them was so long just because that machine was broken. And now they're trying to accommodate everybody else in that line. It was just crazy. And it's only because you had so many people going through this one door. And that was door 12. If you had these premium packages, everybody went through door 12. It was just a bad, it was just an unfortunate set of events. However, once you were inside, everybody knows that you get your food, you get your drinks. Uh, me personally, the first thing I do is I figure out where I'm sitting. I need to know where I'm sitting because that tells me where I go to the bathroom. That tells me where I go to eat, uh, where I'm going to leave. That tells me everything I need to know. I'm a person who plots exits, especially in an arena that big. And if you've never been to the SoFi Stadium, 90% of it is underground. It got cold fast. With that many people, it still got cold. I didn't realize the SoFi Arena is underground because most of the uh, stadiums I go to, I'm sorry, stadium, most of the stadiums I go to above ground. You know, I didn't realize that we were underground until I go inside and I was like, oh, this is my, this is my seat. He's like, oh, you got to keep going down. I'm going down and I'm going down and I'm going down and I'm going down and I'm going down. I'm like, crap. I am seriously underground right now. I need to figure out how do I get out if stuff pops off. Because we live in a crazy time. And as, as much as they try to make the places safe, you still have to think about how do I leave. So I found my seat. I love my seat. I just got a clear shot of the ring. There were TVs. That, if you've ever been to WWE Arena, you know they're huge TVs. So in reality, every seat's a good seat. You're not going to miss anything being in the nosebleeds don't let that stop you uh, once i figure out okay this is where i'm sitting i can get there pretty good everybody in security has seen my face and this hair so it should be easy for me to get back i go ahead and i number one i go to the store there was of course there was a store in there too where you could buy more wwe stuff that's where i bought this because i realized i forgot my jacket back at the hotel when i dropped off all that stuff and now that I'm on the ground, it's freezing. So I need something to cover me up. And this was the the baseball uh, the baseball uh, jersey. Is it called a jersey? Y'all tell me if it's called a jersey or not. The baseball version of the WWE uh, swag was the longest sleeve thing to cover up my arms to keep me some level warm. So I bought that there. I went ahead and got some food. And the show doesn't start until 5 o'clock Pacific time, which is 8 o'clock Eastern time. So by the time I did all of this, I got inside, I sat down, and I realized it was still like, what, a little bit? It's only a little after 4. But I'm the type of person, I can entertain myself for a couple minutes. That's no big deal. I got on my phone again. I ate, got on my phone again, uh, try to figure out how stadium food works they was walking around giving out popcorn and and beer i really wish they had some soda on them they never have soda like not everybody's trying to drink beer but okay whatever 
That's just me whining. But then the show kicked off. And it starts off with the do 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 woo. And, you know, then, now, forever. And the place erupted. I instantly just lost all hearing. Uh, had a great night. Had a great first night. A little sad that the Usos lost. A little sad about that. But it's okay. Good. But then I thought, dang, if the Usos lost, Rome is going to probably lose too. That's what I thought when I left. Like, dang. Uh, so I, I had a great night, great first night. And then I thought, okay, I have to get back on the bus. You were told that the bus was going to leave 45 minutes after the event ended. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this event is over. You got 45 minutes. Go. So as I'm leaving the arena, of course, at this point, it's a mass exodus. Everybody and their mom is leaving this arena. I leave the first exit that I see. I did not realize that what I was leaving out of, I believe, was exit 9 and I need to be at exit 12. Now, normally this is not a big deal. But if you've ever been to the SoFi Arena, you know that these two exits are nowhere near each other. I wish they had let me leave closer to my exit from the inside. But at this point, the staff is just trying to get you out of that building. That's all they want. They don't care where you exit from. They just want you out of the building. Now, I will say that I'm where I live. Most of our arenas, not stadiums, are on are on major city streets. So as you're inside, there are always places says, you know, First Street and Third Street leave here. Uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and Second leave go this way or Metro go this way. There's directions on the inside that tells you like, hey, if you're trying to leave to go to this thing, you need to leave in this direction. So that way you kind of get to the safest exit or the closest exit for you. So far, so far stadium is not like that. It's like, get out, go. So I get outside and I'm like, okay, I need, I need door 12. And so I see a sign that says door 10 that way. So I'm thinking, okay, let me just go this way. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm like, crap, this door 10 is never going to get here. Finally, I get to door 10. I'm like, dang. And now, mind you, I'm going against traffic because everybody's going this way. I'm trying to go this way. I'm on the main street trying to get out. And it's just chaos. Finally, I get to my ex. I'm like, thank goodness. It took me about 20 minutes to walk there, like, it's a shorter walk again from the hotel to the convention center than it was from getting from door nine to door 12 at the SoFi Stadium. It was ridiculous to walk outside for that long. I really wish they had kind of led you from the inside of the building of where you need to be to get out to exit 12. So I get into the bus. I'm just happy to see that bus. And I didn't miss that bus because I've heard tales of people trying to leave that arena by Uber, by taxi, people gave me some horror stories i was glad to have the transportation especially since i did not know la get on the bus sit down take a breather get my ride back by the time we get back by the time we get back home to the hotel it's around i would say about nine o'clock i was like huh it's only nine o'clock i don't want to go to bed and then i checked and i realized wait a minute the superstore is still open let me go to the superstore. I go to the superstore and I'm like, wow. The place had about probably about 20, 30 people inside of it. So it gave me kind of time to just take in everything that I had missed because it was just so many people the first time I went. So I really got to sit back and enjoy it. It was a lot quieter experience. It's like going to Ikea the minute it opens. If you ever been to an Ikea the minute that it opens, you know that it's very calm. It's very quiet. It's usually a couple people in the staff. That's it. It's a very different experience when you're in Ikea by yourself. This is the same way with Superstore. I didn't realize that they had WWE Hidden Treasures inside. That's a soup, That's actually a TV show where they actually find old WWE memorabilia. They had Eddie Guerrero's car. They had the Undertaker um, outfit and the hat. They had some Bianca Bellas, yeah, like 
some really gorgeous, nice pieces. And I got to take pictures. Um, they had the whole um, fun house set for uh, Way Bryant. And I got to take a picture in front of that. I had a bunch of posters that I didn't get a chance to see. They had an entire Mattel section. A WWE and Mattel have had a, a deal for a while now. And they kind of had all the, the old figurines and the old ring set up that you can like push a button and you shoot one guy from one side and rings the other. It was, it was great to kind of see all that stuff. And, and as I was walking through, a guard kind of said, hey, you want to take a picture with Liv Morgan? I was like, what? Like, oh, yeah, Liv is doing the photos and autograph session. You want to go ahead and get a picture? I was like, uh, yeah, where do I pay? I just know from working in conventions for so long that nothing is for free. I just I just knew if I'm going to get a picture with Liv Morgan, I'm going to have to pay for it. So I ran over there really quickly. I get my... I get my 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 pass to go get my picture, and I get my picture with Liv Morgan, which is right here. So happy, so happy. She was so sweet, you guys. She's one of the people that you see them and you instantly want to put them in your pocket, and then you just realize this is a grown person that can't do that. Uh, very bubbly. Who you see on TV is who she is in life. A very caring person. Uh, the line goes fast. Understand that if you're doing a photo shoot, you're only taking the picture. You're not there to have a, a meaningful conversation. You're not there to interview them. It's, excuse me. Okay. They say, hey, get over there. Do your picture. If you have a second, you could like ask. I asked, can I post like this with her and kind of laugh? And she did that. You take your picture. They snap it and say, okay, go ahead. Three seconds. That's all you get. You take a picture, you, you get out. And then as you leave, there's a printer in the back that you go pick up your picture. Now, you could pay $10 ahead of time to go get a copy of the digital later if you want the digital picture. But you get your printed, you get your uh, your picture printed right there on the spot. Now, I already had this sleeve because I had bought Bianca Belair's autograph. Very cute. So I had the sleeve to put this picture in and I didn't have to worry about any damage. Because mind you, I still had my belt on me because I left the SoFi Arena and went straight to the store. So I had my belt on me, had my stadium bag, I got my uncle, and it's all on me. <laughs> so I was very glad that I had that to kind of set the picture into. I really wish they had clear cases that you can buy because uh, most of the places that I've gone for conventions, there's always, there's always that guy on the side who will give you that for like, five to ten dollars the clear case and to put your picture in you don't have to worry about it getting damaged things happen especially the photos if you ever had an actual printed photo i know some of you g's in g's g's in people who have never had actual printed photo but they do get damaged they do get bent if you're not paying attention to it so i was glad to have that uh, i did not get an autograph from her because the picture i alone would think was like 100 bucks like dang but it was worth it i got an experience with a picture with Lake morgan and then I kind of walked around. I just kind of enjoyed the area a lot more, which is fewer people. It was just me. Now, the lounge was closed, so I did have to go through the regular superstore door. However, because there were so few people there, it was pretty easy to get through. And I just walked around some more. I At that point, I left and went back to my hotel room. I got a stadium hot dog. On, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, not stadium hot dog. But I got one of those street hot dogs from the vendors. So good, by the way. It was bacon wrapped, and they were actually grilling onions and peppers on the side. I didn't get any onions and peppers. I'm not big on onions and onions like that. But the hot dog was good. And it was only like, it was like around 11 o'clock at night by the time I left the superstore. But 11 o'clock at night, and you hungry. Anything's good. <laughs> Let's be honest, anything's good. So yummy. So I went ahead. Uh, went back to the hotel room, lay down in bed, thought to myself, dang it, it's going to be Sunday tomorrow. We still got another day. So we'll go ahead and get on to day three later on. Bye, guys. <laughs>